Who wants to see another collection of ancient archaeological finds? We know that's what you come to our channel for, and we like to make sure you're never disappointed. That's why we're constantly on the lookout for stunning archaeological discoveries, and we never find them to be in short supply. There are some real treasures in this video, so let's get on with the business of showing them to you. What's now known as the Shrewsbury Hoard was discovered in Shrewsbury, England in October 2011. At the time, it was one of the largest and most significant Roman coin discoveries in British history. More than 9,000 coins were found in total, all of which were discovered by amateur metal detectorist Nick Davies, who was new to the hobby at the time of his lucky break. Most of the coins were still inside the enormous ceramic pot they were buried within, although some had begun to spill out of the sides. Most of the coins are bronze numi, which were common coins of the 3rd century, and the total amount inside the pot is equivalent to about a year's salary for a Roman legionary soldier. For those reasons, historians think that the pot might represent the equivalent of somebody's life savings. The most recently minted coins were created between the years 333 and 335, with the coins at the bottom of the pot being around 10 years older than that. So it's apparent that the collection was built up very slowly over several years. During the early 1990s, the Sikon Archaeological Project excavated a tomb in Peru and found an ancient mask on the face of a skull. There's nothing unusual about burials like that in Peru, but there is something unusual about the mask. It's elaborately decorated and painted, and some of the paint contains human blood. The blood appears to have been mixed with bird eggs to create a vivid red pigment. Experts have never seen a burial like this before or since and don't know what to make of it. They don't know the identity of the person buried in the tomb, but there's a confidence that he was a member of this Sikhan culture's social elite when he passed away roughly a thousand years ago. The skeleton itself was also painted red, but was buried away from the head and positioned upside down in a square pit. The head was the right way up. There must surely have been a purpose to this positioning, but we can't even make an educated guess as to about what it might have been. Perhaps the blood was intended to be a life force for the rebirth of this significant individual. We know very little about the Pictish people who once lived in Scotland because they left behind no written records. Every Pictish discovery is a priceless opportunity to learn more about them, so archaeologists were especially excited to find a partially preserved Pictish skeleton inside a 1,400-year-old cemetery in Terradale on the Black Isle in late 2019. The soil in the region is highly acidic, so it's rare for bones to survive for long after they're buried. Because of that, very little has ever previously been learned from Terradale, despite the fact that it's the largest known Pictish burial ground in Scotland. The bones of the person buried here are little more than black stains on the ground, and the coffin they were buried with looks like little more than a shadow but it's possible to determine that the hands and feet of this individual were bound when they were buried. That could mean that this person was buried alive. Alternatively, it could mean that Pictish burial customs called for the dead to be buried with their limbs bound so they didn't fight their way out of their coffins and try to return to the land of the living. We need to find more burials before we can develop a theory on that, and finding them is easier said than done. Looking for the beginning of the beer trade? Look no further than the ancient site of Abydos in Egypt. Here we see a brewery that was making the beverage on an industrial scale 5,000 years ago. It's one of the oldest beer making facilities ever discovered and certainly the oldest capable of making beer in significant amounts. Egypt was a brand new country when the first beer was produced here, having been united by King Narmer. Perhaps this brewery was created to help people celebrate their new unity. It's a massive site with eight brewing units and 40 basins. The beer made here would have been fairly primitive, but it would have been effective. It probably tasted quite sour, but it would have been fairly strong. Historians aren't sure whether the people of Egypt came here for religious or recreational reasons. 
We know that the Egyptians sometimes used alcohol in religious ceremonies. But surely that can't have accounted for every drop of the stuff that was brewed in Abydos. Workers needed to blow off steam even back then, so at least some of the produce must have been used on social occasions. Back when the Romans occupied Spain, there was a Roman leader living in Velar de Domingo in the Cuenca province who was so rich that he imported his wine from Syria. His villa was so large that even the dining room covered more than 1,000 square feet. Historians call it Villa de Nojera, and they've been in the process of excavating it for more than 10 years. They found some astonishing works of art in the process including the largest known figurative Roman mosaic in the world. Less than 10% of the villa has been fully excavated thus far, but it's already yielded the largest collection of marble sculptures ever found in Roman Hispania. The site is so enormous that archaeologists don't yet know its full size. But the villa might cover an area of more than a square mile. It's an impossibly massive structure, Yet we don't know the name of the person who built or owned it. The kings and emperors of Europe at the time would have been humbled by the lavish nature of Villa de Nojera and what was inside it. So how can history have forgotten who lived here? In March 2022, a collection of stone tools were discovered by archaeologists in Xiama Bay, China. That might not sound unusual given that all of our ancient ancestors used stone tools at some point, but these tools are special. Firstly, they're around 40,000 years old. Secondly, they don't look anything like other stone tools that experts have ever seen before. The tools are mostly bladelets, some of which are still attached to fragments of the bone handles they were once attached to. These bladelets appear to have been used for everything from boring wood to scraping hides and whittling plant matter. Just under 400 tools have been recovered from the site thus far, as far as we know, no other group of Homo sapiens, Denisovans, or Neanderthals used tools like this at the time. This might have even been the equivalent of a Pleistocene-era workshop, where the tools were made. Their activities stained the ground red with ochre, which may have been used for tanning animal hides. Experts think that the inhabitants of Xiambe were human rather than Denisovan or Neanderthal, but they're unable to be certain and can't say which group they might have belonged to. It's possible they were an entirely unique culture. If the Chinese discovery we've just looked at could be called a 40,000-year-old tool workshop, perhaps we can call this next discovery a 100,000-year-old art studio. It's Blombos Cave on the south coast of South Africa, not far from Cape Town. Archaeologists who've been combing through the cave in recent years have identified evidence of prehistoric fishing along with sharp stone tools. But they've also found evidence that the cave's interior was used to mix and store red ochre. Experts have found plenty of pieces of ochre, but they've also found shells used as containers for the pigment and bowls used for grinding it. They even think that animal bones and charcoal found elsewhere in the cave might have been mixed with the ochre as part of the process. The ochre might have been used for painting and decoration or it might have even been used as a skin protection. If the theories of the experts are correct, this could have been the very beginning of the human conceptual ability to combine, source, and store substances that assisted their social practices. Even then, though, we won't know why red ochre was so important to so many of our most ancient ancestors all over the planet. Speaking of ancient and significant art workshops, let's look at the Benbetka rock shelters of rice in India. This enormous repository of ancient art was discovered entirely by accident, but the paintings on its walls are thought to be 30,000 years old. This is the largest collection of prehistoric art in India and might even be the oldest in all of Asia. The shelters themselves were carved by wind and rain and might have been used as shelter by India's earliest human residents over 200,000 years ago. There are 760 shelters in total, 500 of which contain paintings. Most of the scenes depict local animals and birds along with hunting scenes, 
although there are also a few representations of what are thought to be gods or mythological creatures. Their colors have faded over time, but the original shades of yellow, green, red, and white are still visible. It's clear that this collection of art was maintained and added to for a very long time. While the oldest paintings are undoubtedly 30,000, the most recent was added barely a thousand years ago. As such, the site could be viewed as a long-running visual record of human life in this part of India, which is one of the many reasons why the Benbetka rock shelters were added to the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites in 2003. There's no way to dress up our next ancient discovery. It's exactly what it looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 30,000-year-old siltstone phallus. It was used precisely for what you think it was used for. But that wasn't its only use. The ancient relic, which was discovered in a cave in Germany in 2010, is undoubtedly the world's oldest sex toy. But experts at the University of Tübingen think it may also have been used to light fires. There are marks on its surface where it's been struck against flints. The more polished end of the phallus comes complete with carved rings, the purpose of which we'll leave up to your imagination. The multi-purpose pleasure tool was in more than 12 pieces when it was found, but it's been lovingly put back together by experts. We'll never know why it was smashed in the first place, but if the ancient residents of German caves were anything like the people of today, then it might have been the work of either a frustrated woman or a jealous boyfriend. Still though, it was probably for the best. We can't imagine it was the most hygienic of toys. It's not often that archeologists get to confirm the discovery of a whole previously unknown city, but it happened close to Kilkis in Greece in November, 2021. There, a research team believes that they found the remains of an entire city hidden in the municipality of Paeonia. They don't currently have any idea what the city was called, but they believe that they'll eventually discover that secret as the dig progresses. So far, they've identified the city's wheat fields and three large burial mounds. These single-chamber tombs within the burial mounds are Macedonian in style, which provides a clue to the city's potential age. Tomb 1 is the most impressive of those that has been opened so far, featuring a double-arched roof, a burial bed, and marble double doors. The tomb is likely to be about 2,400 years old, but that hasn't been confirmed. The city itself is thought to cover an area of just over a square mile, with a road running straight through the middle of it. The fact there's so little of it visible to the naked eye suggests that it was completely obliterated, probably by war or disaster. But further excavations will hopefully tell us how, why, and when. Now we go from an unknown city to one of the world's most famous, London, England. There, experts have found a collection of ancient Roman correspondence, including what's thought to be the oldest Roman handwritten note in Britain. Rather than being written in ink, though, the messages on these tablets are carved into wood using a stylus in a layer of wax. There's even a date on one of them, specifically January 8th in the year 57. Archaeologists also think they found the world's oldest IOU note, in which one recently freed slave promises to pay another a price of 105 denarii from the value of the merchandise they've been given by them to sell on. The tablets were found in the mud of the Walbrook, which was a river back then, but is now a buried stream. Other correspondence includes more requests for beer, food orders, stock takes, and some of London's earliest legal rulings. In the words of archaeologist Sophie Jackson, there are letters from the first ever Londoners. One of them even contains business advice, with one friend writing to another imploring them to stop lending people money because it's not in their interest to do so. Thousands of years ago, our ancestors worshipped a wide variety of creatures in the belief that they were earthly representations of gods. We know of civilizations that worshipped lizards, lions, cats, and birds, but this first discovery is a new one for us. It's a mural in northern Peru that was found in early 2021, and it appears to be a shrine to a spider god. 
The team of experts responsible for the discovery believe it to be around 3,200 years old. As if the idea of worshiping a spider wasn't odd enough, this particular ancient spider has been depicted wielding a knife. It was probably carved and painted by the Cupis Nike culture, who lived in the northern Peruvian coast in pre-Columbian times. We think that spiders were associated with both rain and fertility, which would explain why the shrine was made close to a river. There was probably a larger temple at the site, but unfortunately that appears to have been destroyed by local farmers expanding their sugarcane and avocado plantations. What's left of the site, including this unique mural, will now be preserved for further study. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.